Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am. And today, we are going to be making our way through Nokron, the Eternal City. But before we do, like always, let's talk about everything I did off screen. And honestly, I only did one thing, and that was I went ahead and took my Banished Knight's Quality Shield and put the Carrion Retaliation on it. And that's all I did. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to follow this around. Take that guy out. These guys, you can actually get their shield. It's a pretty decent shield. It blocks 100% damage. And it is a very stable shield, along with being fairly light for being a bigger shield. I'm going to come around here. And this is a great spot, by the way, to farm that shield from them. Get ourselves a somber smithing stone four. I know I do see an item over there in that gazebo. We're not worried about that just yet. We want to take out all the enemies first. some spirit flame arrows if you use that that will cause frostbite buildup right here's a really good spirit ash the great shield soldiers those are the guys that we've been killing if you have an enemy that's really aggressive and you want to heal or rebuff yourself, you can always pull out those spirit ashes and use them to tank for you because they can take quite a bit of damage before dying. That way you can heal or rebuff yourself and not have to worry about it. And you summon in, I think it's like five or six of them. Garcelle is a larval tier. So definitely a really good defensive spirit ashes. Didn't realize you were so close, bud. Take this guy out right here. Smithing stone three. And then we'll circle right back around. And get ourselves the ghost glove wart picker's bell bearing. What that will allow you to get is an infinite amount of ghost glove wart ones and twos when you turn it into the twin maiden husks. Or husk I don't think it's multiple husks maybe it is right here I love this vista every time I come through here I just sit and stare at it it's absolutely gorgeous 
get a golden ruin seven. Those ladies, you can farm their gear if you want. This isn't necessarily the best place to farm it. But if you want it, they do drop it up there. We have some silver tears. Let them drop down. And then kill them. Get ourselves another larval tier. If you're wanting to restat your character, you're not liking the build you're playing with, you will get tons of larval tier down here. So you will have no problem in restatting your character. We come down here. Now this boss that we're about to fight, you can cheese it very easily by taking off all your armor and your weapons or whatever you have on and going into the boss fight and waiting for it to spawn because it is a mimic tier. And we haven't met any Mimic tiers yet. This is going to be the first one that we've met. I'm not going to cheese it. We're going to fight it the way that it's supposed to be fought. But if you want to, just take off all your armor and your weapons. Wait for it to spawn. As soon as it spawns with nothing, go ahead and put all your gear back on. So we'll wait for it to do that. And then it'll spawn up. And then once you see it like that, then you can go ahead and put all your gear and your armor and stuff on and start kicking butt. This thing is actually pretty decent at parrying, by the way. We're just trading blows there. Oh, you don't have any more flasks, huh? No more crimson tears? He is kicking my butt, though. Not gonna lie. There you go. He is dead. So we get a larval tier for killing the mimic tier, along with the silver tear mask, which is a very interesting mask. When you put that on, it will boost your arcane. So if you're playing as a blood loss build, this is a good mask to have on. Let's go ahead and light this grace. And then we are going to use Torrent in just a second. But before we do... We're going to kill this Silver Scarab. Get ourselves a Somber Smithing Stone 5. And then we're going to ride all the way to where this archway is. Once we get to the archway, we're going to take a right. Get us a Ghost Glove Wart 3. And then over here, we're going to get ourselves some Dwelling Arrows. We're going to come down this embankment. Grab ourselves some na Nascent Butterflies. Or Nascent Butterflies. One of the two. Not quite sure what to call them. We're going to be going down that path in just a moment. First, we're going to grab some of this stuff over here. And then we're going to come up this path. We're going to light a grace and we're going to sit at it so we can de-aggro these enemies. Let's go ahead and activate this summoning pool. And then right here... This is Nokron, the Eternal City, where we were just at is actually the Ancestral Woods. We want to go into Nokron. So we're coming straight down here. 
jump over. Get ourselves some rejuvenating bolluses. If we have death build up, that will bring it back down. Grab ourselves a ruin arc. And there is a mimic tier that spawns, but it normally just kills itself when you come back here to get the celestial dew. So you should see some ruins pop up. Yep, 2,000 runes. It walks straight off. It usually spawns right there in the middle. Um, and then it walks right off. I, I don't know why. It just bugs out. This one will not kill itself. And mimic tears in this area are kind of like glass cannons. They hit really hard, but they are super squishy. Easy to kill. Get ourselves a golden rune seven. And then if you want, you can go to the left and around the corner there, and there's some more nascent butterflies. Or nascent. I'm just gonna call them nascent. Right here is the black wet blade that will allow you to put blood loss, poison, and a cult on your weapons. Let's go ahead and use a stone sword key. We're going to kill this enemy that's guarding this chest. Right here, this chest is one of my favorite spirit ashes. The best spirit ash, ash in the game, in my opinion, the mimic tier. We're actually going to change out Oleg for the mimic tier. Absolutely love the Mimic Tears. So just like when we fought the boss, the Mimic Tears are going to do the same thing. Or the Mimic Tear, not Tears. It's not multiple. You only get one. So whenever you summon it in, it's going to take health instead of FP to summon it in. But it will have everything that you have on. Your spells, your armor, your weapon, your level... It is essentially you, but as a mimic tier. Also, we get the Nox Flowing Hammer. It is such an OP Spirit Ash. Matter of fact, they nerfed it, and then it still is overpowered. In my opinion, it is a must-have. This ball, pretty easy to kill. I prefer to kill it up here instead of going down there and get ran over a bunch of times. It's just easier to do it here. And don't worry if you're feeling like, oh, well, this is a cheap way to kill an enemy. We will be fighting more of these later on. Much later on. I want to take this lady out. Get another larval tier, because why not? Take her out. Again, they do have a chance to drop their armor. But there is a much better spot later on into the game that we can go to farm their set. If that's something that you're wanting to do. Over here we have a grace. We're going to light it. And then we're going to go ahead and drink a flask. And we'll be summoning in our mimic tier in just a moment. Go ahead and summon it in. And it takes a good chunk of your health. It's all right. Grab ourselves some more Celestial Dew. Get 
And our mimic tier will put in some work. It is not a pushover. And this, the amount of damage that it's doing is minimal compared to when you start leveling it up. So right here, we're going to have a troll. Pretty easy. Our mimic tier, by the way, because we killed all the other enemies, is going to um, disappear. So keep that in mind. Stuck inside the troll. That is not good. Okay. Doesn't matter. Killed it anyways. Pretty easy fight. I did grab all the items. I did. Just making sure I didn't miss any items back there. Right here, using this portal will send us back to the Ancestral Woods Grace that we used to um, despawn the enemies earlier. We're not going to use that. We're actually just going to fast travel back. First, we want to open up this chest. We're going to get the Finger Slaying Blade to give to Ronnie. And we're also going to get a Great Ghost Glove Wart. Let's go ahead and go to our map, and then we're going to fast travel to the Ancestral Woods. Let's go ahead and hop on Torrent. I'm going to pull the map up real quick, and I'm going to let everybody know we're not going to put any markers down because it's such a small piece right here. It kind of clumps up, and it's really hard to tell where all the markers are. So we're just going to run through this. We're going to only ride the edge anyways, except for a few spots. So it shouldn't be too confusing. First things first, we're going to come over here and light this brazier. Hop on Torrent. Come down this pathway. We're going to have a Red Wolf of Radagon. Be very careful. Do not stop. Whatever you do, do not stop. If it hits you, that's okay. Just keep running. We're going to light this brazier really fast before the Red Wolf of Radagon catches back up with us. Oh my goodness. That was terrifying. And then right here... We're going to hop off, we're going to hop onto this pillar, hop down, and then hop down one more time. Do not hop off and land over here. You're going to die. So keep that in mind. You want to hop on that pillar first, and then you can hop down. Get a Ghost Glove Wart 5 and a Golden Ruin 12. Some nascent butterflies, nascent butterflies. Hop up over here. And then what I like to do is I like to angle myself just like this. Hold on. Just like this. And hop on. Very, very sketchy jump. I have fell to my death many a times over here. Off of just jumping at the wrong angle. I'm just going to run. And then jump again. Fall off right here and here. And then we're going to have this ancestral being that we're going to be fighting. Pretty easy. Get the shaman legs. And then for killing that shaman, we get the ancestral infant's head. So that spirit fire you seen her kind of spew out across the way we'll be able to do that when we equip that if you if that's something you want to do i don't find it to be that powerful or even useful so i never use it but if it's something you want to try out go ahead for now we're going to go to our map we're going to go back to the round table hold for just a moment Let's go over to Roderica 
and level up our mimic tier. Greetings, are you here for spit? Be able to get it up to plus five. Now we can go back over to the ancestral woods. Let's go ahead and hop on Torrent. And just to make it easy on everybody, so we don't get lost, we're gonna veer off to the left. There's the Red Wolf of Radagon. Try not to get too close so then we don't aggro the wolf and we can just continue on. Live and let live, right? You want to take out all these rats and these shaman or shaw woman. She's trying to backhand me. Give me a pimp slap. go took all of them out now we can go ahead and take out this silver scarab Be careful there is a rat right here for killing the silver scarab we get the ash of war and uh enchanted arrow i'm sorry <laughs> can't read today go ahead and light this brazier or i think it was enchanted shot i'm sorry and then we want to stay on the left side of these pillars. We're going to have a makeshift pathway we're going to follow. Just going to come right here. Veer off to the right for just a moment. Hop off torrent. And then we're going to grab the Molted Necklace plus one. That's going to boost your robustness, your immunity, and your focus. So if that's something you want to put on, go ahead and do that. Let's hop on Torrent one more time. Actually, not one more time. I'm just going to hop on Torrent again. I'm going to ride down this embankment. Hop off. What I like to do is light this brazier, and because that guy usually sees me, I get behind this obelisk if he's running at me, and then I will hop back on torrent. We're going to follow down this pathway. Light another brazier. And then veer off to the left, just here. And this will be our last obelisk slash brazier. So now we get power uh, gathers somewhere in the horned remains. That means that we lit all the braziers. Grab ourselves a smithing stone five. We're going to hop down right here. Try not to get hit. We veer off to the right and get ourselves a few cure key. And come right here. Just trying to get some hefty bones there. Maybe. There we go. There's the hefty bones. Now we're going to ride up here to the ancestral spirit. We're going to be fighting another one, but this is going to be a regal one. So it'll be a little tougher. What we're going to do is we're going to drink ourselves a flask. And then as soon as we get in here, we're going to summon in our mimic tier. Go ahead and heal ourselves. 
and then just wait for it to come to us. This boss can be a little annoying only because it will teleport across the arena and then you're having to run all the way across the arena because you can't use Torn in here. So yeah, it can be a little obnoxious. It's not the worst thing in the world. And it can also heal itself. And it wasn't even able to teleport. Normally it will teleport way over there. Uh, it can heal itself because there's uh, like spiritual creatures around. It'll like kill them and heal itself with it. But for killing the regal ancestor, we get the remembrance of the regal ancestor. Why is it saying we're still in a fight? We're not. We're not in a fight anymore. We beat it. There we go. Let's go ahead and fast travel back to the ancestral woods. Go ahead and hop on Torrent. And then we're going to take this path down until we get to the road. And then veer off to the left. We're going to grab an item that we didn't grab earlier because it's just easier to grab it when we're coming this way because nothing is aggroed towards us. And then we're going to ride straight ahead past all these jellyfish. The jellyfish are non-hostile unless you attack them. Grab ourselves an old fang and then we can hop down right here. You can actually see where the boss fight uh, we just did is. Grab ourselves a stone sword key. And just keep running. Get some silver tear husk. Go ahead and activate this summoning pool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drink ourselves our wondrous flask because we're going to be fighting a crucible knight. It's not as bad as you think. As long as you're pretty decent at parrying, this guy should not be a problem. Just for good measure, we'll drink a flask in his face. So we get the Crucible Horned Shield for killing him, along with a flask back. Get the Missionary's Cookbook 5. We still have another Crucible Knight to beat, but the great thing about it is, once you kill them, they do not respawn if you die. So don't get nervous if you're like, oh man, now I gotta go beat a Crucible Knight again. Before we fight that Crucible Knight, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna kill ourselves a few enemies. That way they don't sneak up on us when we're fighting the Crucible Knight. That would not be good. We're going to crouch, get behind this Crucible Knight, and do the same thing. Pretty easy to parry once you get your parry times down.
Oh, he got me. It's all right. We got him. Get a somber smithing stone six for killing him. And a smithing stone five. Over here we have a golden scarab. For all you faith builds, it's going to be a good uh, faith spell. Get the order healing. Along with a golden rune seven. And then if we come over here, we get ourselves a golden rune 13. We're going to grab this item. We're going to come over here. Kill this guy here. Those guys there. Grab ourselves a rune arc. Get a smithing stone four. Pick up some uh, golden centipedes if you want. Always good to pick up some crafting material, whether you're crafting or not. And then right here, spoiler alert, this is D's brother. Make sure that you have D's armor set on you because we're going to be giving it to him. This is going to allow us to continue on with D's quest line. Uh. He's going to give us the emote in our order. By the way, if you could kind of make out what he was saying, he actually told us what D's real name is. So right up here is a boss fight. We're not going to be doing the boss fight today. We're actually going to wait um, for the next video to do that boss fight. But as long as you gave him D's armor, you'll be able to summon in D, Beholder of Death. And we're going to want to summon him in because we're going to be fight fighting two gargoyles at the same time. Not the funnest fight in the world, I'll say that. So with that all being said, I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.